Now, all right, welcome back in. Today, I'm going to show you not only how to make this sweet tusk looking dude, but some general practices on how you can make, how to explain this, figurines and things of that nature in the game and some bit of understanding as to how the whole process works. So you need to think of things as layering. So when I have an item and I'm placing an item out and then I want to put other items so it looks like they're for example coming through the eyes you've got to think of something for so let's pick that spot right there first thing you're gonna know obviously this is too far back into the wall you're not gonna be able to get it to the eyes because it's too far back so we already know we're gonna have to do something Let's move this out of the way, just so it's not in our way. I just spoiled our surprise, too. So the first thing we need, you need to have your reference point out, but you want to be careful and put snapping on. The reason you want snapping on is so that, assuming you can do it in the place you're wanting to do this, is when you place a block, instead of being maybe between two snap points it'll be on a snap point so let's snap it right here and then we are going to get out this tool what you want to use is this small one and you so you can see now it's on his eyes because that we set the snapping on you want to use something that's square what i mean by square is this if i use this block that's a whole lot of mess I have to deal with. But if I use this block, it's very tight and very square. Try not to go more than five pieces because five pieces is what you can erase with Y. Then we want to take our... Now this one I'm going to turn snapping off because this one I have to find place. So if you look here first, we see from the side it looks like it's going to come up pretty close to his eye. So now what we have to do is we have to get where the light is to be approximately the same height as his eye right there. Notice that there's the little white circle there. That is your placement and that's going to come in really important when we do that. So let's do... I think that should be good. Now we got to figure out our spacing. So spacing between that eye and that eye. There's two ways you can do this. One way you can do this is by having the same prop again. And you can set the prop over it. So get where your eye is. And now if I place this on the same level but at where the eye is. That looks about right. We get this head out of here, which might be tricky. It is going to be tricky. Let's do this. Now I should be able to get it. Okay. So now we've got them all removed. And when I said that the that little white dot is going to be important because that's what you're placing against. So if I go here, you notice how it sinks in because this is indented whereas that is not. Well, anything that's in your way, collision wise, see how it goes up over? There's a little bit of a spot in between but there isn't much. So you can either, if you've got a little spot in between, you can do that, or you can come in from the side. I feel I feel that the right side is easier, the camera. So to me, that looks a, oh, 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 a little twitchy. Looks about right there. And there you go. So now you have a way to do flaming eyes. It doesn't work for everything. Uh, it's much harder when you've got something like this 
the big dragon head you're gonna have to come out one two two blocks and then you still might have to come out a little bit more so I'm gonna hop over to my public test and I'm gonna show you a couple other examples all right so we're here on my public test section where I do all of my updates and everything and you see two examples here so you got this dude where I clipped the head on top of a, a decent pose in one of the mannequins. I tried to get the two-hander to look like it was in his hand and it just... yeah, it's not gonna be easy. I, I could fine-tune it more with a shelf in the ground, but it's not gonna be easy. And you got this guy who looks like he's almost kind of crucified up on the wall. So let me show you what I mean when I say layers. So we've got that right. So we're going to come in. I need something there so I can stand on. So if we look at this guy right here, first off, what you're looking at is the trophy head. We've got the scarecrow. Then I have a mannequin buried in this wall to give it uh, actual feet instead of a stick with a few pieces of gear. So if I come in here to open, you can see it's got a couple pieces of gear. I used the Elite Hollow Chest because it has a similar red, so it kind of works out that way. Makes it look a little more uniform. So now we look, it looks kind of silly. It looks like he's a little, little stubby feet. So we're going to come up here, we're going to pick up the mannequin. So now I have a mannequin. And then this guy right here, we're going to go ahead and pick up that guy. And you can see now there's just a head in the wall. So we'll pick him up. We're going to come like this. I think this is the spot right here. That is not the spot. This is the spot. All right. And now you can see the last layer. There is actually a stool in the wall. The stool in the wall allows me to get this placed somewhere about like that. So when I hit Y with this, watch the plaque there. The plaque disappears into the wall. Now it's not perfect, and you kind of have to toy with it a little bit, move the stool forward, backward just a bit, just to get it right. Another thing I did with this one is I put the both the mannequin and the scarecrow up one, so it looked like it was, and I up the head's way too low, but it's good enough for our, our purposes. So center this guy on, and look at the stick that the scarecrow's on, the crossbeam, and I'm going to set that to where it's just in the wall a little bit. Not too much. We just want the stick back far enough that we don't see a ton of it. So it kind of looks like these ropes here are actually holding them to the wall. Uh, Crucifixion-like, I guess. Now we're going to do this. This one's a little harder because the Scarecrow, as you can see, the Scarecrow gets in my way and it doesn't want because now that white reticle there is trying to clip over the Scarecrow's collision. So if I crouch down, I can come at it at a steeper angle and I just want it to where the, the little hands are just buried enough that they're not that noticeable when I put the armor on. Doesn't need to be crazy. Just a little bit. Just like that. So now I can get rid of the one block. Come up here. I can put the armor back on him. Which gives that more realistic feel of being a... I mean, he'd be a dead guy at then. Maybe he's a little bloated in the stomach. But it looks like we hung him up on the wall because he was a, a bad, bad guy. I already showed you a video about the heads. This one is very simple. It is literally just a mannequin with four pieces of gear and the head that's in the wall. If I do this, I have to come from the back side because it's so much. So you can see... The head's there, and there's a stool directly behind it. This one's a little unfortunate because of its size. It has to remain with por a portion of the wall out. There, There is no way with this mannequin pose, if you want that kind of heroic, like I'm about to come and get you pose, there's no way to do it and, and have 
a solid wall behind it. But if you want to hide the plaque, and you can see it comes through just a little bit right here, that's kind of what you're looking at. Now for the the two-hander, what I did is I sunk, I tried with the wall plaque, it didn't work. I couldn't get it to, to sit against this properly. So then I went to the floor stand, which is the same as what I displayed right there. And I chunked one down into the ground so that it sat there and kind of tried to get it to where it was just at his hand. It's still not high enough. So the way you would do that is the shelf trick. You put your hole in the ground like this. You put your shelf up against one of the walls and you raise it up just a little bit to where instead of placing it against the floor piece below it, you're placing it on the shelf piece and then it allows you a variable height anywhere from as high as this to as low as the shelf will go which is I don't know a couple centimeters over the base and that gives you a little bit more control over where you're placing it still won't look very good and you're still gonna have that you can see the wooden stand right there but that's what I talk about when I talk about layers you always want to remember this white dot is where you're placing the item against. So if you can squeeze in from a, an extreme angle, you can place things where you couldn't normally place them because there's collision in your way in front of it. All right, thanks for watching, everybody.